Hello, this is Mr. Martin. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk more about similar polygons and scale factor. Uh, and we're also going to talk about similarity statements. Um, so as always, if you have questions, make sure you pause the video and uh, get help when you need it. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So we ended off talking about scale factor. So let's continue talking about similarity statements. So we have a symbol for congruency. It's an equal sign with a squiggle on the top. So for similarity statements, we're just going to take part of that symbol. We're just going to take the top part. Okay. So when you see that symbol in geometry, you want to think similar. You want to read this as similar. So a valid similarity statement must, must match corresponding angles and sides. Okay. And this is the same thing that we would do with uh, congruent polygons as well. So must match corresponding angles and sides. So that's what we talked about in the previous video about the order matters. So let's write a similarity statement for these two triangles over here. So let's, if I start with triangle A, B, C is similar. Okay, so I started with A and then I went to B and then I went to C. So the angle that matches with A, and I can tell by the tick marks, because they have the same tick marks, is D, right? These triangles are in the same orientation, but they won't always be. Then I'm going to go around to E, and then around to F when I name the other one. That's what I when we mean when we say order matters. So triangle D, E, F. So that's our similarity statement. And if I know that two triangles are similar, remember from the last video, we know that the corresponding or matching angles are going to be congruent and the corresponding sides are going to be proportional. When I say proportional, we're going to make ratios and we're going to set them equal to each other. So let's start with uh, number one here. It says triangle JKL is similar to triangle PMN. So I'm going to use this similarity statement to help me figure out the order that these should go in. So here's J. So since J is in the first spot when I list this triangle, I want to look for the first letter in the second triangle. That's P. So it matches over here with P. So do you see how it doesn't match with J? That's kind of how they're oriented, but that's not how it works. All right, and then since K is in the second spot, here's K, and M is in the second spot over here, these are going to match. And we've got uh, one more set. Let's see if uh, this color works. And then our last one, L, is in the third spot, so that's going to match with N in the second spot. So the color coding here hopefully will help us. So we know that angle J is going to be congruent to angle P and angle K is going to be congruent to angle M and then our last pair of angles angle L is going to be congruent to angle N. So corresponding angles are congruent. Now let's talk about the corresponding sides. So let's start with side JK. So side JK, the side that it matches with, notice I'm making a fraction here because we're going to be writing ratios of the matching or corresponding sides. So JK is yellow-green, so I want to go over here and go yellow-green, so PM. All right, and let's do another pair of sides. Let's do KL, so green-orange. So KL, and then green-orange over here, MN. And then our last one, we've got uh, LJ, so I went orange-yellow, so let's go orange-yellow also, and P. All right, so if you notice, on the top are all sides of the smaller triangle, and on the bottom are all sides of the larger triangle, and I wrote all of these in the same order. So these are corresponding sides, JKPM. KLMN are corresponding sides and these. So 
corresponding sides are proportional, which means that all of these ratios are going to be equal. All right, if you want to go ahead and you want to pause the video and give uh, number two a try, feel free to do that. Otherwise, you can finish the notes and go back to that. All right, and then you'll also do number three. Now, for number three, you have a quadrilateral. You have four sides, so um, you'll just have one more pair of congruent angles and one more pair of congruent sides. Uh, and I think I'll end this video here, and we'll look at a couple more examples on solving for missing measurements in the next video. But as always, make sure you get help. Uh, nothing in that we do in here is, is beyond your ability. You just might need to try a little harder and get some help, and we'll see you next time.